Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a breakdown about contrast bath. I'm going to cover everything you really need to know about contrast bath, why you should use it, when to use it, when not to use it, and everything in between. So if you are interested in this topic, definitely be sure to stay tuned because I'm going to jump into it right now. All right, guys, so I'm going to be using the same format um, that I've been using in some of my previous videos where I get on here and I take you guys into my computer and we break it down that way. I kind of like this format because then I can kind of write and talk to you guys and kind of give you more of a visual aid as we go through it. So let me uh, go ahead and I'm going to take you guys right into my laptop. All right, guys, so here we go. We are in my laptop. All right, so as you can see to the left, there is a picture of a typical procedure when you are doing a contrast bath. So here's everything you need to know about contrast baths. First of all, we need to understand the purpose of why you would do this. So the purpose is contrast baths are primarily used to promote wound healing, uh, reduce scarring, help with managing pain, reducing swelling, and promoting circulation. All right. Sometimes there's bath solutions um, can be incorporated. Sometimes you'll see more nursing will incorporate some kind of bath solution. We as OTs and CODAs, we don't do that. <laughs> uh, we simply just use hot and cold and that's it, immersion, that's it, all right? And this um, will help to soften and remove any dead tissue, decrease inflammation, and just improve overall healing process, decrease pain, decrease swelling, all right? So that is what we will typically do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to write here on the screen to make it nice, clear, and easy to understand. All righty, I got my little lady here. We'll keep her there. All right, so first thing is, as you can see in the picture, you're gonna wanna use a basin, especially if you're doing hands. Um, I mean, you can use a bigger device if you're doing feet, but generally you will see um, us using a basin like the one you see in the picture. And this is, like I said, it's to facilitate recovery um, of injury or inflamed body parts. Typically, it's most beneficial for conditions pertaining to hand injuries, um, wrist sprains, and again, like I mentioned, we're gonna do hot and cold immersion. So, pertaining to hot, so I want you to understand, if you're using hot water, hot water um, is going to promote vaso dilation okay so hot water promotes vasodilation which increases blood flow and relaxes muscles whereas cold water is a vasoconstriction all right so it's a vasoconstriction with cold water which is reducing inflammation as well as swelling all right so the typical water temperature can range anywhere between 100 to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is about 38 to about 43 Celsius, I believe. Just double check. Make sure you double check that, guys. Um, and then that is more for the hot. The cold is about the temperatures will range anywhere from 50 to about 70, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, which I believe that is roughly 10 to 21 Celsius. Again, check that out. I'm not sure what the Celsius, all right? Um, the immersion period is, well, let me just say this. So when you're doing the Im immersion, each temperature may last for approximately three to five minutes, all right? So you wanna go off of the tolerance of your patient, okay? So the process is repeated about 
you're repeating this process about several, I would say seven cycles about, let me fix that there, the process is repeated about seven cycles and usually about three to five times um, to achieve the desired result. And while you're doing this, you're going to want to incorporate some sensory stimulation and movement exercises. Okay. So like what I mean by this is like more like gentle stretching. You'll probably have to do gentle stretching. You're probably going to be doing a little joint mobilization, um, some rubbing, right? While their hand is emerged. All right. And then you want to look for how you can gradually progress them. So gradual progression is going to be based on the comfort level and the therapeutic goals. Are you achieving a reduction in pain, right? Is there more improvement with um, joint mobility? These are the kind of things you're thinking about. So you're always thinking about your goals. And then the last thing that you want to think about is safety safety and precautions very very important so you want to take into account an ind individuals that have conditions such as open wounds sensory impairments circulatory disorders um, thermal sensitivity these things you want to stay away from okay very very important um, I don't want anyone getting in trouble. Again, this information is just information. You need to do your due diligence and also um, gain service competence for sure because you do not want to do this and hurt your patients. So again, you want to make sure that you're not doing this with open wounds. Open wounds is something that the nursing may do. The nursing may do this. Um, a lot of times with open wounds, you might see nursing use whirlpools, but they also, again, every facility is different. Some people, some facilities might be okay with whirlpools, other field, um, facilities might not be okay with that because of infection control. So again, this kind of gives you the breakdown on why you should do this, what to look for, the procedures. Um, also keep in mind, it's not really being done a lot you probably will find this more in hand clinics but again you're not really going to find this in you know being done in skilled nursing facilities like how it used to be everything is really shifted everything has gotten so much more fast paced so when you're doing these kind of interventions you really have to plan for it not to say you can't do it you definitely can it's just you have to plan for it and really um make sure that you have your thermostat to check your water temperature again you don't want to hurt anyone. <laughs> All right. So I hope that this video was helpful. Be sure to like, share, and don't forget to subscribe guys. All right. All right. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that it answered some of your pressing questions pertaining to contrast bats. It has been a while since I've done this. I did do it in the past, but it really has been a while. I haven't really been seeing a lot of it done. Um, currently, but I would love to know if you're doing it. So definitely leave me a comment below. Let me know, hey, Tamisha, I do use this. And these are the results I've been getting. All right. Until next time, guys, take care and bye-bye.